So this is what we're making. An adjustable cigar band ring using a coin and border stamps. First, we need to figure out the length of the metal for our ring. So you could use a ring sizer or an existing ring to get the inside diameter. Add the thickness of the metal, multiply by 3.14. That will give you the length. Or we could use a piece of card. So we want it to be about as thick as the metal. Um, and I'm using about an 8 millimeter wide strip because that's the width of the uh, metal that I'm using for my ring. And you can see that I just cut this off the back of my little notepad. Handy. And because it, it is as thick as the metal, it'll let us know if, if we've got the right size. So I'm just going to wrap this around my finger and when I get to the end I'm going to cut it off. So this is going to be an adjustable ring which means that the ends aren't going to be soldered together. So that's my length. And that is... sixty-one millimeters long. Now, if it were a regular ring to for it to fit over your knuckle, it would have to be slightly bigger. But because this is adjustable, it'll, it'll uh, expand if we need it to. So I have this. Now, I'm going to use a coin for this ring. And it's point, this is a threepence, an old threepence. This is 0.8 of a millimeter thick. And I rolled my metal to 0.8 of a millimeter thick, so that when I solder it, it'll be exactly the same height. So aesthetically, it'll be a little bit more pleasing. Normally, when we make a coin ring, we just solder it on top of the band. Uh, this is going to be a little bit different. What I want to do with this one is solder the end against it, because we're making what is going to look like a cigar band ring. Um, I know that's probably politically incorrect at the moment, but um, it's from the positive part of my youth when my granddad used to smoke cigars and he'd slip the cigar band on my finger. So this is going to look like a cigar band ring. Now, <clears throat> for me to make the end of the metal fit, what I'm going to do is just use my disc cutter. Now this little coin is 16 millimeters in diameter. This is an American uh, hole punch and 5 eighths of an inch is really close to 16 millimeters. So what I'm going to do is just slip my metal in there use some of this lubricant. Make sure that your punch hits the hole correctly. Run a little line of the lube on your cutter. You don't have to, but it makes it last a little bit longer.
So now you can see that that's going to be a really nice join. So I'll cut my length so that the ends are symmetrical and then I'll do the same thing on the other side. So with my paper blank, I'm just going to mark the middle, which will be 30. Put my coin against it. Hold the middle. So that should be really close to the correct length. So I'll cut this with my shears because we're not soldering. We can just cut it. If you want, you can cut it a little bit long uh, because this is just a free end. We could trim it up later if it's not the correct length. So now we're going to cut another curve and then just match this for length. So now I have my two pieces and I'm going to lay it on a charcoal block to solder it. Now I turn my block edge up, although this side is nice and flat, I, I could use it. And we're just going to place the coin. Our strips and I'm, I'm doing this upside down because I want I want the solder on the back so that if it uh, is slightly dodgy then it'll it'll be on the back and it won't show now there's a crest on the back so I'm able to line this up so it's fairly straight and that means it'll be straight on the front. Mix up your flux, make sure it's nice and creamy. And you can see when I'm painting the flux on I'm actually moving the brush from the ring shank to the coin so that I'm making sure that the metal is coming up tight against the coin. So now I'm going to use hard solder and about a four millimeter long piece. We want to be slightly generous with this because we want to make sure that it goes all the way through to the other side. And you'll notice I placed the uh, solder with my brush and that's just to make sure a little bit of flux gets on the solder. Keeps it from oxidizing. So we want a nice neutral flame on our torch. I'm just going to do one side at a time on this. So I'm just circling on the right side at the moment. I'm not paying any attention to the left. Now both of these pieces of metal need to come up to the same temperature. And by circling, we can pretty much guarantee that they're going to be the same temperature. The flux will go clear. 
and then the salter will flow Lovely. shift to the other side and the solder shifted so I need to push it in place with my solder pick and now we'll quench it and pickle it so there's my blank I'm just going to round the ends Not much. My Swiss number two cut flat hand file. This is just to take the sharp points off. And then 400 grade sandpaper on my sanding stick. Now what you could do is Google cigar band ring and uh, you'll get a hint of what I'm doing. Normally they're ridiculously expensive, they're in gold, but this is the poor man's version. So I'm just going to put my blank on a steel bench block and I'm going to stamp it because the cigar band is a really decorative uh, border. So what I'm going to do is just use a simple border stamp. To give it a little bit of personality. So you always want to make sure your stamp is straight up and down and then just hit it once. And this is just a straight stamp and I'm lining it up here on the side where I can see. And then I'll finish it with this stamp that I started with. So you can see that it is just a little bit of a border with the end slightly rounded. So we'll do the same thing on both sides. And it's just to make it look like it has a uh, an edge, a decorative edge. Now we'll hallmark it. And I hallmark it where there isn't a pattern. There's that way this little bump that's on there can get sanded off. Now, because we've stamped it, we've work, work hardened it a bit, so I'm going to anneal it, and then we'll form it around our ring mandrel. I'm going to use my Pepe Tools ring bender, because I have one. Now I'm using the nylon blocks, 
so that it doesn't hurt the metal. Now, if you don't have something like this, we can do this on our ring mandrel. And if you don't know the size, what you can do is just wrap your paper around the mandrel. And that is an O. And you can just slip, slip your ring on. And we just want it so that we can hammer it so that these ends don't overlap each other. Now, I'm going to use a Bonnie Dune plastic hammer because this is urethane and it actually contours to fit whatever you're hammering. So it's actually pushing it both ways. So we make it nice and round. It's a nice little hammer, not absolutely necessary. So there's our perfectly round ring. Fits over arthritic knuckles. And uh, what, what we can do is just polish it up now. If you want, you could put silver blackener on so that when you buff the black off, I'll just show you. This is oxidized, but if you use silver blackener, it, it goes inside these marks, and then you would just buff the main part off, and the black will stay in there. So for me, I'm going to pickle it now to get the oxides off and polish it, and then it's done. So that's it, my cigar band ring.